Hey, what's up, everybody? Dorn Aldana here, coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And today we're going to talk about three big reasons, rather five big reasons, why you're not getting enough realtor referrals and how to fix it. So if you are a 100% commission mortgage professional and you are either a newbie or a veteran or something in between, and you're wanting to get more closed deals faster, easier, better with less effort, the fastest path to the cash is and always will be getting top producing realtors to make you their exclusive. So realtors are absolutely a, a gold mine, but unfortunately not every mortgage professional has that experience, right? Many of you perhaps can relate to the experience of having realtors slam the proverbial door in, the, in your face because they're not giving the time of day because you have a lackluster value proposition or you're, you feel like you have a great value proposition, but they don't feel that way. And, or you've worked with realtors in the past they're arrogant, they're apathetic. Uh, maybe they're the prima donnas that think their poop, their poop don't stink and they have all these demands and they're micromanaging you and they're just clueless or they're flaky or, or they give you empty promises that don't deliver. So there's a lot of drama and trauma and there's a lot of pain associated with realtors by virtue of the fact that most mortgage professionals just don't know how to crack the code on how to connect the dots with the right partners, how to get the right partners on their team, how to get the synergy, the chemistry with the right people that is fruitful, that allows you to have amazing people on your team. You love and adore them. They love and adore you. You know, they're the kind of cool cats that you'd invite to a summer barbecue. You'd invite them to your, you know, wedding if you're getting married or you'd invite them to uh, a birthday party or you'd invite them to a special event because they're your people. They're not just people that send you business. They're your people. They're part of your tribe. Imagine having amazing synergy chemistry like that, where they love and adore you, you love and adore them. And there's just that magic where sparks fly and magic happens. Well, that's precisely what we're going to be talking about today. But a lot of mortgage professionals have the antithesis of that, right? It's like, the last thing they want to be doing is working with realtors. It's the gag reflex. And I often say, if you don't like working with realtors, it's kind of like people who say they don't like sex. You're probably doing it wrong, right? There's so, probably something in how you are approaching it that is not working. So let me unpack the five big reasons why you're not getting more realtor referrals more often. The first big reason is you're targeting the wrong realtors. Now, as I'm sure you've Noticed if you've been in this business for more than a day, not all realtors are created equal, right? If you've been working with realtors in the past, you know some realtors are awesome, they have great energy, you have great rapport, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be a great partner because if they don't have any business to send you, that's probably not going to put many zeros and commas in your bank account. That's probably not going to serve you to your income goals. So just having great chemistry alone is not enough, right? We need to have great chemistry, but we also need to make sure they have the capacity to send you the kind of business that would allow it to be a win-win where you can bring massive value to them and they can bring massive value to you. And oftentimes going after the, you know, the bottom feeding, whining, suddenly complaining, jelly donut eating low producers is a fool's errand because they don't have any business to send you. So you're kind of barking up the wrong tree, so to speak. We need to make sure we're threading the needle on targeting the right realtors, the ones that can give you the highest upside and still be great synergy, great chemistry, and have cool cats that you really love connecting with, working with, serving, and bringing your gift to. And so from working with mortgage professionals over the last 16 years, what I've found to be true is that most mortgage professionals will consciously and unconsciously settle for the lower producers because they have a misconstrued uh, presupposition that the top producers are prima donnas, they are already married to their current lender, they're too hard to make inroads with, they're not gonna give me the time of day, so why even bother? And as Henry Ford once said, whether you believe you can or you can't, you're right. But obviously, 
it's going to take something for you to stand out from the pack. If you're just another average Joe LO and you're going after the top dogs, that's not going to line up very well because it's kind of like if you're in the dating world and you want to attract a 10, you know, you want to attract that absolute stunner, you know, that's good looking, that's beautiful or handsome, that's got great character, that's got great habits, that's, you know, living on purpose with passion, that has their money together, that is, you know, really making things happen in their life. And they're just a quality individual. That's what I would consider a 10 in the dating example. But if you're wanting to attract a 10 and you're showing up as a two, that's not going to bode well, right? If you have chump level habits and you have a chump level lifestyle and you have a chump level character and you're wanting to attract, attract a champion, that just does not jive, right? Water seeks its own level. If you want to attract a 10, you need to be a 10. So there is a certain amount of what you need to bring to the table if you want to attract champions, you need to show up as a champion. And so there's a certain amount of hiding or shall we say just going to what seems easiest by virtue of going after the low producers. We can hide behind the fact that, oh, I have a belief that says that the top dogs are not giving me, gonna give me the time of day or they're prima donnas or you know they're just too much work or they're just too much drama or whatever the case is. The basic presupposition is the top producers, the juice is not worth the squeeze, so I'm not going to bother. And frankly, if you believe that to be true, you're right. But that's only one truth. There's also another truth that says if you bring massive value, if you show up being a 10 to attract a 10, if you are that rising tide that raises all the boats and you bring massive unique value such that you hold the cookie, you are in the driver's seat and you are interviewing them, they're not interviewing you, that shifts the posture entirely, that shifts the equation entirely, and now you're in a situation where why not go after the top producers? If I can choose between someone who can send me one or two or three deals a year, or I can work with someone who sends me one or two, three deals a month, which one would I prefer? Well, obviously that's a no-brainer, the one that's sending me one, two, three deals a month hands down all day, every day, especially if I'm the one who's setting up the rules of engagement, right? In military terms, they call that ROE, rules of engagement. Well, if you have a massive kick-ass unique value proposition that's compelling in the eyes of the realtor, you get to flip the script so that they need you more than you need them. So now you get to determine who you work with, who you don't, you get to determine who you work and give your gift to and who you don't, who you bless and release and who you keep on your dream team. You're in the driver's seat. So again, it comes really down to a premise that you can have it exactly the way you want it if you don't settle. So they're more prone and more likely to understand that if they wanna control the quality of the transaction, that is inextricably linked with their necessity to refer their clients, endorse their clients to their go-to mortgage pro because there's no faster, easier way for them to gain control over the quality of the transaction than to have the financing, the mission critical piece of the transaction to be handled by their go-to trusted mortgage professional. So that's the first reason why most uh, mortgage professionals aren't getting as many real estate agent referrals as they'd like is they're targeting the wrong realtors. If you want to attract the right critter, you need to use the right bait, right? If you want to attract salmon, you can't afford to use the wrong bait that's going to catch a mud shark or that's going to catch, uh, you know, something that is not desirable. So we need to use the right bait. And that means you need to actually have a value proposition more than, hey, I offer great rates and great service. Throw me a bone. That's probably not going to get you uh, being positioned as a welcome guest. Chances are they're going to see you as a annoying pest, not a welcome guest. And so we need to have a hook, a value proposition that gets them chopping at the bit to work with you, that gets them hot for what you got. And that means you need to have the words that work to get the top producers ready, receptive, ripe, and very much eager to have a conversation with you or meeting with you. 
And that's a big reason why mortgage professionals hire us at mortgagemarketingcoach.com because that is not an easy code to crack. We've coached mortgage professionals that have been in the game for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years plus. And I can tell you from experience working on the front lines, coaching mortgage pros, that a mortgage professional can literally be in the trenches on the front lines for decades and never crack the code on what those words are that actually work to get the realtors hot for what they've got. It's like the elusive butterfly. It eludes most people. So you need to have the right hook. It's not great rates. It's got not great service. It's not, you know, throw me your crappy deals and see if I can resurrect the dead. You don't want to be the last resort loan officer either, right? So that is a mission critical piece of the equation is what is your hook? And if your hook ain't working, you may want to reach out and get some expert guidance on what you need to do to make it work. Because again, this is not an easy code to crack. Most people never crack it. Even after decades of messing with the Rubik's Cube to no avail, and they still can't get those colors to line up because it's not an easy code to crack. You can't just go on YouTube and watch a free video or listen to a free podcast or read a free blog and figure this stuff out. You need a proven plan, a proven system and generally speaking, your competition is not going to share that with you. Your competition is not going to share that with you when you go to a big conference and you got some person on the stage with their pom poms on, giving you all that hype and all that, you know, pump you up, jump you up, fluff you up. That's not going to give you the proven process. That's just going to give you a bunch of fluff that you can't actually implement. And chances are you know that to be true because you've been there, done that, and you already know the results you got from it. Chances are the reason why you're listening to this or watching this is because that was inadequate. That did not work. You're looking for something substantial that you can bite your teeth into that's paint by the numbers, plug and play, true or not true. And that's precisely why people hire us. So that's the second reason why most mortgage professionals aren't getting as many referrals as they could or should is they have a lackluster, weak value proposition. They're using the wrong hook or no hook at all. Let's get into the next big reason, and that is using caveman methods from the dark ages. What do I mean by caveman? I'm talking cold calling the same 40 freaking realtors every month, every Monday, calling realtors every Monday without any real value proposition, just checking up on them, seeing who they have that they might need to get pre-approved and nothing of real value to bring to the table. So there's not only the lackluster value proposition, but you're using caveman methods, manually picking up the phone and calling them one at a time and not really having anything efficient and automated to speed up the process. I mean, it's the 21st century, friends. We don't need to be using caveman methods anymore. There's something called technology that can allow us to condense time frames. So instead of having to spend hours and hours and hours sifting through gravel just to find a few gold nuggets, you can literally condense decades into days by using technology, by using automation so that you can get these realtors hot for what you got before you even talk to them so that you can get the ground softened and do some air bombing in advance before you send in the ground troops. You know what I'm talking about? It's called leverage, more results, less effort. And that happens not by using a gardening trowel to dig the foundation for a skyscraper. That's doing it the hard way. It's called using leverage. The excavator is leverage. It allows you to get more done with more fun, with more fruitfulness, with more fulfillment. And that's really at the end of the day, what it's all about. There's no brownie points at the bank for doing it the hard way. So if your broker owner or your sales manager or your coach is telling you to cold call realtors, I'm here to tell you that's doing it the hard way. There's a much more fruitful, effective way to do it. Because if you're heading to the gunfight with a butter knife, we got a problem. That's doing it the hard way, right? It doesn't matter how much you work at wielding that butter knife, you're still gonna get bludgeoned. You're gonna get a bullet in the head. That's doing it the hard way. So caveman methods will keep you hindered and will have you getting way less referrals than you could or should because again, you're doing it the hard way. Why not just upload a list of top producing realtors into a proven system, a proven campaign we call the realtor attraction campaign. And then bada bing, bada boom, you're booking appointments with top producing agents like a hot knife through butter. And now you have a system to do that appointment to get them eating out of your hand because you have a kick-ass value proposition. 
So you're again, flipping that script. So the realtor needs you more than you need them. Notice there's a whole lot more ease and flow and a whole lot more result on the other side of that. There's a whole lot more juice from that squeeze than doing it the hard way with cat caveman methods, cold calling, right? It's just the no brainer. So that's reason number three. Let's get into reason number four, chasing versus attracting. Chasing versus attracting. So caveman methods get you chasing, right? You're prospecting, you're cold calling. They haven't heard you from a hole in the wall. They haven't seen your value proposition. And all you are is an annoying pest as opposed to a welcome guest. All they see you as is a loan leech trying to leech loans from them. And you wonder why they're not giving you the time of day. You wonder why there's a high wall of resistance and cynicism and skepticism and resignation. It's because they're sick and tired of that kind of loan leech chasing prospecting approach. And yet this is what most coaches, what most sales managers and what most broker owners are teaching their people to do. It's like a slap on the back, go get them tiger, you know, cold call realtors. And that's basically the method they're teaching people to grow their business. And yes, that works better than nothing. Right. If you throw enough yogurt to the fan, eventually something's going to stick. But that's still doing it the hard way because you're chasing. Who wants to be chased? Well, maybe the ugly girls like to get chased, but the fine ones, the beautiful ones, they don't like to get chased in the same way because chasing is only attractive if you're attractive. Now, if you're attractive, that's another story, right? They love to be chased if you're attractive. But if you're not attractive, you're just annoying. If you're not attractive, it's like, get away from me. Stop calling me. I don't want to hear from you. And it's the same thing in the real estate business. If you aren't attractive, if you're not positioning yourself to be attractive, then you're chasing, then you're groveling, then you're begging. Who wants to work with a beggar? Definitely not a top producer. Definitely not a 10, right? Maybe the twos want a beggar, but the tens, they are wanting tens. Tens want tens. Eagles want to soar with eagles. Sure, the chickens are cool to have you scratching around in the chicken yard with fellow chickens, pecking around and just doing what chickens do. But if you want to soar with the eagles, you've got to show up as an eagle. So you need to have that positioning and that posture that allows you to attract versus chase. And all it takes is just a little neediness to tip the scales into that chasing vibration, right? Your posture should be erect and very much indifferent. You're cool either way, you know? It's like, I'm cool either way. I'm building my dream team either way. I'm living my dream either way. I'm helping real estate agents, top-notch real estate agents, kick ass, take names, chew bubble gum, and crush it either way. The question is, are you gonna be one of them or are you just gonna keep doing what you're doing and keep getting what you've been getting? There's a posture of it, indifference. It's a relaxed confidence. But as soon as you're needy, you start to lean towards them, right? And all of a sudden you got commission breath. You got commission breath halitosis. And that is repelling, right? Bad breath, commission breath is repelling. It's not attractive. So you've got to have the right posture, the right positioning by virtue of the right value proposition. And again, all those are intertwined, right? And it creates a dynamic and energy. We wanna make sure you're in the attractive energy. Let's talk about the third or rather the fifth reason why most mortgage professionals are not getting as many referrals as they could or should from real estate agents. And it's this, being a loan hawker versus a problem solver. You see, most mortgage professionals, they simply see themselves as that. A mortgage professional, they do loans, they offer loans. And so when they come to the real estate agent, they're myopically focusing on that one thing. I offer loans, I can close deals on time, I offer great rates, great service, and they're myopically focusing on that one thing. The problem with that though, is you are a replaceable commodity because everyone says that, everyone offers that. That's a minimum expectation just to be in business. Real estate agents expect you to offer great rates and great service. So now you're just a replaceable cog in the wheel. And because of that, they slough you off. I already have my lender. I already have a mortgage professional. I already have my go-to broker or whatever their story is. And they slough you off because again, you are positioning yourself as a 
loan hawker instead of a problem solver. Now, what's the difference between a loan hawker and a problem solver? A loan hawker is just another me too mortgage professional. They offer great rates, me too. They offer great service, me too. They close deals on time, me too. They have all these different programs for all these different types of people, me too. But again, that puts you in a box of being replaceable. A problem solver is looking at the real estate, uh, the realtor as a business owner who wants to take their business to the next level, potentially, not everyone does, but most smart, ambitious, growth-minded real estate agents are wanting to take their business to the next level. They wanna close more deals with less effort. They wanna make more money with less time, energy, effort, and stress. And so the problem solver doesn't just focus on what the typical loan officer or mortgage broker would offer, which is being a loan hawker, but instead is now a diagnostician. They're like a doctor diagnosing before they prescribe. So now they're diagnosing the realtor's pain points, challenges, what keeps them up, up at night, where are they leaving money on the table, where is their business losing steam? And by virtue of being a diagnostician, a doctor who's diagnosing the pain points and the challenges of that realtor, now they're able to be a strategic problem solver that spans way beyond, that has a scope way beyond just offering loan services to their clients. And that changes everything because now you get to turn the faucet on and off at will. Now you want more partners who send you all their business all the time. You've got a replicatable system to literally turn that faucet on at will. You turn it on, turn it off at will. A partner starts to you know, go full blown stupid on you or prima donna on you and starts you know doing some crazy that doesn't jive with your rules of engagement you lovingly bless and release them if they choose not to abide by your rules of engagement you see when you become a problem solver there is no competition it's like in the land of the blind the one-eyed man is king because everyone else is blind even if you have half an eye you're transcending and ascending beyond everyone else. And that's the same thing here. When you become a problem solver, you transcend and ascend above and beyond everyone else because everyone else is playing the game of loan hawking while you are a bona fide problem solver and a true bona fide partner to the right people who are worthy of your gift. And again, that changes everything. And that's precisely why smart, ambitious, growth-minded mortgage professionals hire us at MortgageMarketingCoach.com because they're sick and tired of being towed around by the nose by these real estate agents, giving them all kinds of drama and trauma and being at the effect of these realtors and feeling like they have to be their lone bitch because they don't have a power position in the relationship. They're basically just begging below the table, hoping some crumbs will fall off the table. That's not the way to prosper. That's not the way to build a business where you're in control and you guys deserve to be in control. You're on 100% commission. You eat what you kill, no safety net. And your business and the quality of your life is inextricably linked with your ability to generate quality leads. But if you don't have a system to do that because you're just kind of you know hoping, wishing, and praying for the phone to ring, that does not bode well, right? That does not bode well. That does not give you a replicatable, reliable, proven system to prosper. And when you're on 100% commission, if you don't have that, you're going to have skinny kids, right? That's no way to live. So if you're listening to this, you're watching this, this and you're like, Dorn, I'm picking up what you're putting down. I need a system to be more strategic with these realtors. I realize I've been doing it the hard way. I've been cold calling. I don't have a value proposition. I don't have a proven process. I don't have a method by which to book the appointments. Or if I do, I don't have a method by which to flip the script so that they need me more than I need them. I feel like I'm chasing. I feel like I have commission breath. They're not giving me the time of day. And I feel like I have this neediness that's still there in the energetic space that I want to get rid of. I want to have it so they need me. I want to have it so that I'm cool either way. I'm cool as a cucumber either way because I'm prospering regardless. I don't need anybody. I'm building my dream team with a replicatable proven system that allows me to turn on the faucet at will. I want a new partner, turn on the faucet at will. If that's you and you're a 100% commission mortgage professional, you've got an 80 basis points or higher comp plan, and you want to take your business to that next level, 
and you're sick and tired of getting your ass kicked or spinning your wheels, banging your head against the wall, doing it the hard way, doing the same old thing, getting the same old results, and you know in your heart you're capable of so much more. You know in your heart that you were born to soar, and yet you're still scratching around in the chickens with, in the chicken yard with the chickens, metaphorically speaking, and you want, you're ready to start soaring like an eagle. If that's you, I invite you to book a breakthrough call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com. MortgageMarketingCoach.com forward slash apply, rather. MortgageMarketingCoach.com forward slash apply. Book a call. You'll get on the phone with either me or one of my consultants. We'll lift up the hood on your business, have a real talk conversation, an honest conversation, and shine the light of truth on your situation. Where are you at now? Where do you want to be? And if we can help you create a breakthrough in your business, we'll show you what that looks like. If not, we'll be the first to advise you to pass. But either way, you will leave that meeting with massive clarity. Chances are more clarity you've ever had in your business, bar none. Massive clarity, massive value, and chances are we'll have some fun. So if that sounds meaningful and worthwhile to you, and you'd like to have a real talk conversation of what it really takes, what it's really going to take to take your business to the next level, I invite you to book a call, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Thanks for hanging with me. I trust you got some insights and value, some distinction from this podcast. You just learned, and I just shared with you the five reasons why you're not getting enough realtor referrals and how to fix it. So make sure you're applying this information, friends, because the biggest gap in life is the gap between that which we know and that which we do. It's not enough to know this stuff. We got to do this stuff. In fact, I would go as far as to be as bold as to say, we don't know it until we're living it. And that's, again, precisely why smart, ambitious, growth-minded, badass mortgage professionals hire us to help them tap their full potential and no longer being in the rut, the prison of stagnation, thinking about it, hoping about it, praying about it, but actually living their dream, not just praying about it. So if that's you, go ahead and book a call. Let's see if we have the magic to help you take your business to the next level. If we have the right fit, the right chemistry, if you're the kind of person we can help, go ahead and book a call. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. MortgageMarketingCoach.com forward slash apply. My name is Doran Aldana coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. Be blessed. We'll see you on the, ep the next episode, y'all. Peace.